Yo, welcome back guys. It is Guido. It is Fighter Friday. Fighter Friday. So we did Ship Saturday last Saturday. This Friday we got Fighter Friday. I finally loaded up World of Warplanes. World of Warplanes. It's been a bit of a mixed bag actually. Kind of interesting. This is the true noob experience though on this one because I only have four flights total that I've played. Mostly against bots. I don't even know if a single human has played against me yet. I'm in more or less the tutorial part of it. I've actually unlocked a tier two airplane. Again, if I call them tanks, I apologize. I might even call them ships. <laughs> I even call them ships. One thing you will notice right away is that I have a large resolution and a large screen monitor here. And all the planes and words are itty bitty and I cannot fix that. I do not know I've gone into the settings, attempted to change the resolution size, and it always defaults back to this. So I don't really know what's going on with that. I'll have to look that up and see if that's a fix or something I can come up with. But this is very similar to tanks as far as unlocking the different airplanes. If you go up here, and I'm going to need my going to need my glasses several times along here because I can barely read this stuff. But here it is. Taking a look at off the lean in at the screen right here, but the P-12 it starts off for the American, and it goes through. It's got bombers, multi-role fighters, heavy fighters, and fighters seem to be the classes that are here in the game. And I've been playing the American one. I've actually unlocked the P-26, the Boeing P-26 P shooter, one of the first monoplanes that the U.S. used in any numbers, uh, intra-war anyway. So we're going to play, though, the Tier 1. We're going to talk about it as we go. Tech tree is similar. Unlocking is similar. You have pilots. Your pilots are your crew, as it would be in a world of tanks. And a couple things are kind of interesting about this, actually. Um, I bought... I've mentioned this a couple times, but I bought a Thrustmaster, a pretty good Thrustmaster throttle quadrant and joystick. But it turns out... This is very arcade-like, and as a matter of fact, from what I can tell, you can actually control the game with your mouse and keyboard much easier than you can with a joystick, at least at the level that I'm at. So if there is, if it is actually better at the higher tiers to use a joystick, you'll get more out of the performance of the airplane. I don't know that yet, because at this point I'm not really sure what the turn rate and G-force kind of application is as far as what you're getting out of the elevator at the rear. Are you... If you pull harder, will you get more turn rate, or is it always to the stops? Do you always get as much turn rate as you can get? Because with the mouse, you kind of point in the direction that you want to go, and it's not, it's not, I was going to say it's not intuitive, it actually sort of is, because it's fairly easy just to keep the mouse on the, on the airplane, and we'll talk about that when I get in there. So, at this point in my World of Warplanes career, I'm not sure if it's the mouse that's better or the joystick, but I have read that the mouse is actually easier to use, so... A little bit disappointing on that side because it is very arcade-like, and we'll talk about that when we get into it. But you've got a hangar. You have hangar slots. It's hard to see, but I have one extra, so right now I can buy one extra. One thing to note is all the gold and all my free experience from tanks is here in World of Warplanes. However, my silver is not from tanks, so that doesn't cross over. I've only got, what, 90-something thousand silver up there. So you have to build up your own silver in World of Warplanes. Remember that tanks, ships, and warplanes had some cross capability, especially in the case of a premium account, but that's no longer true necessarily, depending on which type of premium account you have. World of Warships has its own kind of premium account. World of Tanks has its own kind of premium account. I don't know about World of Warplanes. The other thing I will say about this is I'm really late to the party in World of Warplanes. To some extent, it's a bit on life support. I have absolutely no idea how long they're planning on supporting this game. I would have to look at the numbers. I don't think it's extremely popular in the U.S. It's nowhere near World of Tanks, I would say. And I don't know what it's doing worldwide. So really it's riding the coattails of the other two more popular uh, games, I guess. I was looking for a different word there for wargaming. But that's cool. It's a wargaming title. The graphics le actually look pretty cool. So I'm digging that. So we'll take a look at this. We'll jump into a game now. I'll give you some game plan. This is just a broad brush. So unlike ships where I've played a little bit and now I've come back to it and I've, I'm further in at tier 5, this is no kidding a true noob experience. I know absolutely nothing about this game other than the four battles I've had, a little bit of digging around, my inability to fix my resolution problem, which I 
is driving me crazy right now. Um, and the fact that it's similar to World of Tanks and World of Warships as far as you... It's a grinding game. You're grinding up tiers. You have to unlock modules on the airplanes. If you look at that when we go to the tech tree and we'll go to... Let's go to the pea shooter because I don't think I've unlocked anything. You can see that... And again, it's so small. This is really driving me crazy. But you've got an engine, an upgrade to the airframe. Looks like a weapons upgrade and bombs on the fighter bombers. You can add bombs to it. So there is some ground attack capability here. You can fly bombers as well. So we'll go back to the hangar. And we will play a game here in the, what is the P... The letters are so small. What am I in? I'm in a P-12. All right, P-12 biplane. Tier 1. So we'll come down here to battle. And I do have a mission that's going on. The onboarding seems... To, well, this is actually a daily mission. There's a little bit of onboarding. I haven't really broken out how that exactly works. So we'll jump into a game here. And now we're waiting. And I think what it's trying to do is it's trying to get me an actual game with humans. But there tends to not be many people playing Tier 1. And right now it's 1.19 in the afternoon. So uh, unlikely to come up with any humans. Like in ships where if... You don't have enough people eventually put bots in there and they'll have little colons or semicolons, whichever ones the ones are. They're just the two dots. I should learn that at some point. That'll, I'll make that a research item for myself. <laughs> Denoting bots and then you know the humans because they'll have a they won't have those. Although you can usually tell a human because he's, you know, giant stud one seven five or underscore X or whatever. <laughs> and the bots tend to just have names like Gary and Fred or or maybe an ace's name. So this is going to take a while. We'll have to edit out this while we wait. Okay, we are in, and this is my this is my third attempt actually at recording some gameplay because it's, these sounds are so bloody loud. I had to turn them way way down. So hopefully this one ends up working. All right, here we go. So like I talked about earlier, it is a bit arcadey. It's I'm just moving my mouse around. So as I move my mouse, wherever I point the mouse, the airplane or the the, uh, we'll call it an autopilot or the game, whatever you want to say, actually it just moves the airplane itself and I don't have to worry about I don't have to worry about any of it. There's some flat coming in. So it's just a case of wherever I put the mouse, which is a little bit a little bit disconcerting actually, a little bit strange. And I'll be honest, I don't know what we're supposed to be. People are bombing stuff, but I'm not really sure what we're supposed to bomb. So I'm actually just, we'll just bomb this thing. How about that? We'll just drop a bomb here. There we go. And trying to, trying to look behind. Oh, and I hit the ground. <laughs> oh, I know what I needed to do. I needed to right click. I needed to right click and then I could have free camera. Now that may be a case where the joystick is a better plan, basically. So here we go. We're preparing to come back into the game. <laughs> That's fantastic. So the pilot just ran straight into the ground, attempting to admire his bombing work. All right, here we go. So W is go faster, S is slow down. What I don't know is if you can actually stall the thing. So let's find out. I'm just going to go straight up into the air. It's hard to see the degrees right there. Again, I'm having issues with the resolution. Ah, I did stall. It appears to have very easy stall characteristics. It stalled and just went nose down. So, all right. At least this airplane doesn't appear to be any spins of any kind. At least not right now. Can I go too fast? Oh, maybe. <laughs> I'm just getting a little... <laughs> Interesting. All right. So, we're really coming in here quickly. We'll slow down. We'll just slam on the brakes just like uh, Goose and Matt did, man. Just slow down right here. Oh, just a bad guy. Or a good guy here. Just dropping some serious rounds on this guy since I stopped twirling around with my mouse. Apparently, the bomber's got plenty of hit points. Notice the bottom left where the gun started to get hot. A little lead fire there. Doesn't look like it takes a whole bunch. That's one thing I noticed. It's it is more or less just point at them and hit them. There's not a whole lot of lead fire required. the smokestacks. What the heck? Is he going to hit the ground? Oh! Well, there you go. You can hit each other. I did not know that. I am using the, uh, the WASD keys just a little bit. 
guy's evading me big time. There we go. All right, so a little, little weaver move right there. A Thatcher weave, whatever it was called. I can't remember. All right, so there's another guy down. I'm kind of beat up here. I need a little more lead fire. There we go. A little lead fire works out. Oh, head on attack. We'll slow down. Get inside his turn circle. He does some Elon rolls, which are not really very effective. Follow him mostly. He's got to be about dead. There we go. Now he's dead. There's another one. Come off of him onto him. A little lead fire into that guy. Again, it doesn't require a whole bunch of lead fire. It's just not as far as that goes. There's this guy. Oh, that's my bomber. My bombing site. Is that guy dead? He must be dead. There's no longer a symbol on him. All right. Come back around. Oh, there's a dude up here. He's smoking. Head on past on this guy. Oh, two circle fight and he dies. Somebody got him or maybe I did. I don't know. You can see my wings damage. I just noticed that in the bottom right. The wing is showing a little bit of damage. There, there are bad guys showing up on the radar on the map as well. But because it's so small, it's hard to see. All the letters and everything are so small. I gotta figure that resolution thing out. This guy's really low. Now I can't come down. I gotta come up above him there, otherwise I'm gonna hit the ground myself. Unless I just put the, the pipper on him and the airplane follows. It does all the banking. Oh, uh, is it gonna shoot down my stuff here? This guy's taking forever to die. I think you can also aim for engines and things like that. I was real. Oh man, I got the 90 knots. I had the brakes on the whole time. I don't know if these head on shots are more effective for getting the cockpits or anything like that. I'll go ahead and turn above this plane. Above this plane and above this plane. Oh boy. So we're on our way down to. We're down to 143 knots. We'll come off of him a little bit. Build ourselves some turning room. And then flail as we come in and try to get Seems like you can maybe get yourself turned a little faster if you use the... Uh, oh boy, this is dead. Oh. There we go. Looks like my pilot is not feeling very good right now. I don't know if that was a G-Force thing or a damage thing. It's hard to tell. Look at all those bad guys. Alright, let's head over this way. I have no idea, frankly, what I'm doing. As far as what the goal of this particular map is. So just head up this way till we find a guy to shoot at. There also doesn't seem to be any ammo problems here. At least not in this bot fight that I'm in. Really, you see, you just put the dot on him and it's actually hit him. There, in this case, there would be all kinds of droop from the range. But the, uh, doesn't seem to be a problem. I'm getting hit by all kinds of stuff here. And there goes the old Ava number. Not working out for you. Alright, where are they? Where are they? There's one. That guy looks to be dead. We're the he was far enough away, it seemed like we needed some. Oh, geez. Head on. Oh. There we go, back around. Roll back over, you dumb thing. That's how I'm hitting. I just put the pip on the hits, and it's a little bit silly. Shot at. I also don't know if I can shoot my friends. That's a good question. I'm not sure if that was my kill or not. Okay, are we done here? Or are there more? Where are they at? Eh, there we go. It is a little bit difficult to keep track of once they go outside of your screen. That's always a trick in airplane games. There's 
There's one. Okay. Oh, defeat. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> we lost. All right. That is one cool thing about airplanes and tanks is that because the gold and the premium days cross flow, they add to the one or the other. Now, what I don't know is, it would be hard to know this. I'd have to mark down what my days are in tanks and what my days are here in planes. I th I'm not sure if the grace period is still going on where any days I add to my premium account over in tanks are actually World of Tanks premium days. I think they're actually going to be split at some point. So in the past they did add. To be quite honest, I'm not sure if they add right now. If you know, put it down in the comments. I cannot remember because that would be a that would be a kind of strange thing to have some premium days that are World of Tanks premium days and some days that are war gaming premium days that are supposed to be across the three across the three games. So I I'm unsure where that's going to be. And at some point they're going to have to make a clean break on all that stuff. But so far they've been cool about it. Initially, you got all the days that you had in each different game, which was nice. But, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't know. I'm not sure that's going to work. So there you go. A defeat, unfortunately. Uh, and then we got, what's this saying? Paint schemes and emblems. Do you want your aircraft to look like a real Aces Steel Bird? Okay. The gratuitous uh, female on there. That's great. So this says new AA guns, and that's just taking you through the mission. And there you go, Fighter Friday. Um, all right, so what do I think about it? It's very arcadey. Uh, unlike tanks and ships that sort of grabbed me kind of initially with the graphics and the, the gameplay and the compelling nature of it, uh, I'm gonna be honest, this one is not grabbing me immediately other than the fact that it's airplanes. Some of it has to do this with the speed at which the whole thing happens and the arcade nature of it. You don't really have a good opportunity to kind of admire the different airplanes as you're zinging by each other. That's just a kind of a, an airplane game kind of thing anyway. And it's really one of the things that has kind of kept me away from games. Not the graphics or everything, but just the nature of them. They're all very frantic for the most part. And that's one thing that drew me to the tanks is that it isn't a very frantic game. And the same thing, and even more so for ships. There are some units that are faster than others, and it, it is a relative thing. But overall, this game, the whole game, is pretty frantic, really. And if it's just an exercise of pointing my mouse at the guy, and I don't have to worry about too much about turn rate and radius, too much about how much backstick I'm giving, uh, the rest of the controls, the yaw, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's interesting enough just to point my mouse at guys continually. Now, clearly, I could play against other humans that are very good at this game, and they will do some things that, that will take me a long time to figure out, and they'll be very good at it, so I got that. But my immediate reaction to it is it's just kind of a, I point my mouse at people and shoot at them. So, you know, what else really is there? Again, that's kind of like someone coming into Tier 1 at World of Tanks and saying, oh, well, the T1 Cunningham is boring, then the whole game must be boring. So I get it. It may grow on me. But as far as that initial hook that makes me go, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting, i got to tell you, it's really not there. And, and I, I think that probably checks with a lot of people that have played it. But I'll continue. We'll, we'll look at it. If I get any really interesting stuff, I'll update my progress as we go. Fighter Friday will not be every Friday, so don't worry, World of Tanks guys. Uh, once I have something for you, I'll bring it back on Fighter. So I'm considering buying one premium with the gold that I've got off of the tech tree. So if any of you guys are World of Warplanes guys, and you can give me advice on what the best premium on the tech tree is to get, it doesn't matter to me which country it is, let me, let me know, and that may help me narrow down the search right there. So thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. That is it for Fighter Friday, and we will see you.